we have come to engine management which is the second process of service operation ITIL service operation ITIL service has five processes what are they event management event management ITIL service operation okay event management engine management problem management access management request fulfillment the five processes okay so even management we have just discussed and this is incident management as you know this is the most important process in the entire ITI. ITI has 26 processes which is split over the five life cycle phases which is service strategy you know already just speak <laughs> service strategy service design transition operation yeah CSI Mark is the expert level, but these are the five life cycle stages. Okay, <clears throat> good. So uh, there are 26 processes spread across these five life cycle phases, of which five processes fall under service operation. Okay, and of these five, in fact, in fact, all the 26, the most important process of ITL, which I believe, is incident management. What is incident management? Anything goes wrong in your IT infrastructure. Internet disconnected, application not working, website slow, or server down, whatever it is, down or whatever it is. What will happen? First, it will be an incident. All right. Somebody will rise an incident, or the incident will be automatically raised by systems. If something goes wrong, there will be like alarm coming in somewhere, and it can lock us instead. And someone will attend the instance basically and solve it and close instance. You know, we call it a staking system. Of course, if a server goes down and that kind of big thing happens, then we call it as major incident. That has a separate procedure, we will not monitor. But all the rest of the incidents, let's say this, some functionality is not working in the application, some uh, website is slow, or quality is bad, or whatever. You know, simple instance, for example, you're using mobile, or whatever, like telecom, postpaid mobile services. If you get an invoice, which is three times more expensive than you expected, there's some billing error, what do you do? You call the service operator, allow them to actually check whether you know, everything is correct. Can you tell me what are the why this bill is so high and all the stuff? Or finally they found that some deviation. What they will do? They will rise in ticket. They are rising incident. That will go into system and they finally fix it and they'll acknowledge saying that it's been fixed. So most of the operations are actually revolving around the incident. That's what we're gonna talk about today. The purpose of incident management is to restore the service to the normal levels which is which is like a normal operation as quick as possible have you heard about problem management which is the next process we're going to talk about problem management okay. problem yes any questions from online yeah i have a question can i know why instant can be closed only by the instant manager why not we have to fix on it very good question you know, you know the incident management should be closed by only the incident, sorry, incident should be closed by only the incident manager, a person who is actually rising or like, you know, managing, owning the instance. The service desk operators, they are the people who actually close the incident. The incident might be fixed by somebody else, a technici technician, but he will not be allowed to close. The question is why it is so? Why can't a person who fixed the problem can simply go ahead and close the incident? The reason being, somebody should own the instance. All right, technical person, less a very uh, uh, simple scenario, he might not attend this problem because he is busy or he's lazy or whatever it is, or he don't, uh, I don't know how to fix it, but he simply close the incident. What happens? Customer will be very happy. He'll get an intimation that the incident is closed. He will check it and the problem is not solved. The incident is not solved. He will again call and shout at you. So there is a vested interest for somebody else who is fixing to close the incident even before it hasn't really closed. And no one knows who is closing the incident. Somebody opened it, somebody closed it. So that's, as per ITIL, a person who opens the incident, called as incident, uh, you know, engineer or service desk professional, he is the one who is owning it. He might solve it if it's a small instance. If it's not a small instance, corresponding team, L2, L3 support or whatever technical team will be fixing it. They'll inform this service desk again. They will check with the customer whether they have, the problem is solved, and then they close the instance. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank, you. thank you. 
All right, so definition we will uh, quickly go. I mean, you just remember, definition is actually closing an incident as quick as possible or restoring the service as quick as possible with a minimal uh, disruption to the service. So, you know, when you agree for SLA, in you know, SLA, right? Service will be, we'll talk about it, service strategy in more detail. Uh, so this is your <coughs> SLA metrics, this is what we call SLA metrics. So incidents can be categorized into this is the basic incident metrics. You can have complicated metrics. Uh, if you're working for airlines or healthcare, you will have even more stringent. But it's a very typical metrics. Wherever you go in IT, BP1, that kind of uh, you know work or services, you see these metrics. So incidents are class uh, classified as high uh, ticket one. We call it as priority one ticket. If priority one ticket comes, everybody is jumping up and down. No one can see until you fix it. Okay, so. You can just look at this. If the urgency is higher and impact is also high, we call it as critical or ticket P1 or you know insert critical one or P1 ticket, priority one ticket. Yeah, priority one ticket. It, in this one, it's saying less than four hours, but nowadays I see more like it's less than one hour. If you get priority one ticket, it should close by one hour. And then you have priority two ticket. You can basically name this one. This is like metrics where you have urgency and impact. What is urgency in impact, by the way? What is urgency? Tickets are categorized using urgency and impact. Urgency, impact. Yeah, urgency basically means that it talking about what what kind of incident it is. Let's say the service is completely down, gone. The website is not opening or your application is not working. Mobile phone, call not going. So it's urgency or not, it's highest urgency. It is working, but the quality is little less. So it can be called as medium. It's working, quality is okay, but there's some other problem like billing or whatever. Can be a low. We can solve it leisurely. That's urgency levels. Impact talks about how many people are getting impacted by this. If it's one or two people getting impacted, we call it as low impact. If a division is getting impacted, we call it as medium impact. The entire company is getting impacted. Well, then I have a question for you. Um, there is an impact, only one individual got affected, but this guy is the CEO of the company. Okay? What do you say? Is high impact, low impact? Only one person. As for the definition, it should be low impact. It depends on the person as well. We will write an exception course because you know CEO is not able to access his system <laughs> because his time is more valuable. Maybe a lot of things, the company might lose many things, right? So based on the certain exceptions, we will say senior management or maybe some client facing or senior person decline. Even though there is single person, we still tag it as high impact. But usually we say low impact is few individuals or one individual. Medium is maybe a division, a small division. So big division, again, we can tag it as high. It's affecting more than a division. It can be as high. So based on the impact and the urgency, we will actually rate this as a P1, P2, P3, P4. P5, we can simply say it is, you know, this is P5. P5 is planned. We don't know when we'll solve it. Very low important thing is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any questions? Classroom? People attending online. How many people are attending live? How many? Okay, so we have about six, seven people attending live session. Questions, anyone? Classroom? Question? Yes, please. I have a question. Uh, that's a question from LVC as well. Uh, just, uh, just a minute. First question I'll answer. Uh, what's in the class? It's better. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we haven't really talked about request fulfillment. There is also another process called as request fulfillment. Right? When you apply for a checkbook in your in, in a bank, it is not considered as request, it's considered as request fulfillment. Okay? So when you write a ticket for getting a checkbook in a bank, for example. Okay. There are many other request fulfillments. So the request fulfillment is a particular process where it's more like a standard request. It is not an incident. When you say incident, there is a problem with your service. Either the service has gone down, or the quality went down, or it's slow, or something happened, which is an exception. Whereas request fulfillment, it is still a ticket, all right? But it's not something went wrong. It's your standard request. I want to book a ticket or 
uh, I want to order a checkbook. I want to open an account. Uh, I want to create, uh, uh, add a new feature in my, you have set up box TV. You can top up some things like, you know, if your cricket is coming, then you put in another package for cricket and stuff. These are all comes under request fulfillment. Why they are different? Because, you know, by the very definition, instant means there is a, some problem, there is some mistake, something happened. Request fulfillment is a standard process where you are asking for new service or extra service. You could actually treat them as the same because you can simply raise a ticket and, uh, you know, if it's a problem, you solve it. If it's not a problem, you give a check or whatever it is, whatever you request. It sounds logical, but when you really see into it, <clears throat> a services engineer is paid by number of tickets, actually. Okay, the person going to a shift, let's say one day shift, eight hours is working, he is supposed to take at least 20 or 30 instants. Anywhere you go, that's a normal matrix. He has to actually take 20 or 30 instant calls. If you combine request fulfillment and also incidents, people will be more taking incidents, sorry, request fulfillment, because they are very simple, right? For example, password reset. It's a standard process, actually. It's not an incident, it's a request fulfillment. I just want to reset my password. If I am, I'm, normally people are lazy, that's what people say. So if you give an opportunity, I will just go, I'll be very smart to pick all small and request fulfillment, like password reset, this and that, and you go home. So what happened here? So I'm not really being very valuable for the organization. If you club the request fulfillment and incident management, request fulfillment more standard things, they're small things. You can just do it by clicking here and there and that's done, right? But in that management, you have to think about it. What went wrong? Why it went wrong? How fast you have to restore? You have to follow up with the technical team. You know that, right? It's because fulfillment, you have something you write. Let's say in your organization, you write for a different invoice or whatever. So you follow up with them, right? Sometimes we actually cry as well. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> okay. So what are the case? But this is like hard work. Request fulfillment is really easy. It's standard steps. So when people use, uh, you know, if you club it, then you can't really justify how much work, who is doing it, and you cannot value them. And also for organization, one of the metrics is how many instances you're getting it. If you're a healthy organization, you should get lesser instances. Okay? If you launch a new service, instances will slightly go up because a new service, people don't understand your technical thing is not well, right? When it's a stable state, instances will actually go down, it will be like this. Okay? Incident management is like your pulse. Based on the number of incidents, you get in organization, you can say how healthy the organization is. If you club with the request fulfillment, you lost your pulse. You can't really see what's happening in the organization. Because the request fulfillment is like standard procedure, standard request. So you can't really judge how many they come and you lose your pulse. So there are many ways request fulfillment and incident management would be different. And ITL clearly says that you have to handle it separately. A team which manages request fulfillment is completely different than a team which manages incident management. Okay?